In this lecture, you're going to learn about another pattern for creating objects. That is a constructor function. So just like the factory function, we're going to create a function. And the job of this function is to construct or create an object. However, the naming convention we use for constructor functions is different. So the naming convention we have for factory functions is what we call camel notation. So the first letter of the first word is lowercase, but the first letter of every word after is uppercase. This is what we call camel notation. So it looks like this, camel notation. We've got one, two, three, four. We can see the first letter of the first word is lowercase. And these uppercase letters look like camel humps. That's why we call it camel notation. In contrast, we have another notation that is called Pascal notation. And in this notation, the first letter of every word should be uppercase. So one, two, three, four. You can see the pattern, right? Now, when naming constructor functions, we should use Pascal notation by convention because that's something that other JavaScript developers expect when they read your code. So we're going to call this function circle with a capital C. Note that I did not call this create circle, and you will see that in a second. Now, just like our factory function, here we need to add a parameter, radius. However, instead of returning an object, we're going to use a different approach to initialize an object. In JavaScript, we have a keyword called this. And this is a reference to the object that is executing this piece of code. You're going to see that in a second. For now, just imagine this references an empty object. Now, you know that with dot notation, we can access properties of an object, we can read a property, or we can set a property. So on this new empty object, we want to add a property called radius, and we set that to this radius argument that we receive here. So in JavaScript, our objects are dynamic. Once we create them, we can always add additional properties or methods to them. So here we're adding a new property to an empty object. Now, similarly, we're going to use this approach to add a draw method to this new empty object. So this dot draw, but we set this to a function. And in the body of this function, we simply do a console.log of draw. Now finally, in order to create a circle object using this constructor function, we're going to define a constant called circle. And here we're going to use another keyword that is new circle and pass one as the radius. What is happening here? Well, when we use this new operator here, three things happen. This new operator creates an empty JavaScript object, something like this, constant x set to an empty object. That is happening under the hood, but you don't see that. Next, it will set this to point to this new empty object. So in this code, we have access to this new empty object, and we set this radius property as well as the draw method in this new object. Finally, this new operator will return this new object from this function. So it looks like this, return this. We don't have to explicitly add this statement here in this function. This will happen under the hood. So let me recap. When we use the new operator, three things happen. This operator first creates an empty object. Then it will set this to point to this object. And finally, it will return that object from this function. So what we get here is that new object. And we simply set circle to point to that object. Now let's see the difference between factory and constructor functions. So with factory functions, we create an object like this. Constant, my circle. Here we call create circle and pass an argument. So with factory functions, we simply call a function. And in this function, we return a new object. In contrast, with constructor functions, we use the new operator. And instead of returning an object, we use the this keyword. Also, in terms of naming convention, with constructor functions, we use the Pascal naming convention. But in factory functions, we use the camel notation. 
So you might be asking which approach or which pattern you should use to create new objects. Both these patterns are equally good for creating new objects. The constructor function pattern is familiar to developers who have some experience programming in languages like C Sharp or Java. So with this pattern, you can see we're creating a new circle. Now, if you don't have any experience in languages like C Sharp or Java, you might want to go for a factory function. There is really no difference between these two patterns. However, there are some discussions online by some strongly opinionated developers comparing these two patterns. My suggestion to you is do not get hung up on these discussions. They're just a waste of time. Pick one pattern and just stick to that. Hi guys, thank you for watching my JavaScript tutorial. This tutorial is part of my JavaScript course where you will learn all the essential JavaScript features that every web and mobile application developer must know. If you're an absolute beginner or have some experience in JavaScript and are looking for a fun and in-depth course that teaches you the fundamentals of JavaScript, this course is for you. This course is also packed with tons of exercises that help you master what you learned in the course. In fact, many of these exercises are questions that come up in technical programming interviews. So if you're pursuing a job as a front-end or a back-end developer, or if you simply want to have a more in-depth understanding of JavaScript, I highly encourage you to enroll in the course. For a limited time, you can get this course with a discount using the link in the video description. Click the link to find out more about the course and enroll.